So here are the 3D printed tracks that we sell. These will work on my tracked vehicle or the Kyosho Blizzard SR or FR and possibly other blizzards. Um, I just don't have any to have tested them on. So you can buy them either assembled from me or unassembled and you have to assemble them yourself. This is what one full track looks like that's assembled here. They're pretty long, um, but they are the exact same length as the stock blizzard tracks. They're um, a shorter width though. These ones were kind of aimed towards more of like a, almost like a construction type of track instead of a snowcat track. Because if, if you want your machine to run like a snowcat, I would suggest just buying the blizzard tracks. But these should be some nice summertime, you know, not in the snow tracks. Uh, but these probably work good in the snow as well. So if you buy them unassembled from me, I'll quick show you how to assemble a couple links. Because it's the exact same throughout the whole um, thing. So each link, there's three pieces. There's like the main link, like these ones here. And then there's two uh, track or uh, wheel guide pins. Like, there we go. But what these do is when they're actually wrapping around the wheels or on the bottom, you know, the wheel can't hop over the, the groove there. So for each track, what we need are two of these and there is no right and left, there, uh, there's just one, one type. And then one of these, and if you look on these, one side, the camera will focus in, one side has like the printed layers in it, and the other side is smooth. And then this side, there's a smooth side, and the side where there's like the, the uh, tr cleat on here, like a tread. Um, so you'll put the shiny side of the wheel guide, like this. And it's actually slanted. And you'll do that on both. And then on the bottom, they'll stick out the bottom just a little bit like this. Um, you don't want them flush, otherwise you can't get the pins in. They kind of... They stick out just a little bit like that. And then I suggest when you s start your first link on your track, that you leave, like, let's say we're starting a brand new track here. Sorry, my camera's focus is being weird. But yeah, start one with the links like that, and then use a blank one without putting the links in. And then what you'll do is you'll just take a nail and feed it in on the ends like that. And I, I just push it a little bit by hand to keep them from falling out. And then I'll use, sometimes I'll just do it right on the table. Like you just push the nail down like that. You can, actually that's probably the easiest way. If you can see that. Or I'll use like the end of a, of a tool of some kind. But you don't want to go very tight. You kind of leave a little bit of slack like that. So it's nice and free hinging like that and then we'll leave these two out until we like finish the track you can kind of see how I did that here otherwise as you're going you'll, you'll have to keep fighting these because the pins that we put in here are what hold these on so these will fall out because we won't be pinning that until we you know complete the track and then connect it on the other end but here let me show you one more so I'll take a new link And then you can see that, that groove is slanted. So, you know, when you put it in there, this groove is what the nail actually catches on. Because you can see on the ones that we put a nail in already, it makes these pieces, like, solid so they don't actually come out on their own. And you don't need glue or any screws or anything. So then, so you kind of have them 
sticking out just a little bit. And then um, you'll get a whole bag of nails. I don't count them out, I just do them by weight. So you'll probably have a ton of extra ones. And some of the nails have like, um, like bad machined heads on them. I would not use them. Like this one, for example, you can see the point is kind of sloppy. You'd have a really hard time getting that in the track, so just don't use those ones. And then as you're pinning it, if you can't get it all the way down the track, it's because these are sitting too high or too low. You gotta make sure to line up that groove on the inside. And then I'll just, or I'll do it on the wrench this time here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, once you get all the way done, like on this one here, I believe it's 47 links, give or take one or two. I think I was using 47 on mine you know, for each side. But once you put it on your machine, then you'll want to put in the other two guide pins and then, um, you know, push the nails in while it's on your, your machine. And I think for me, it, it takes but anywhere from one and a half to two hours to pin all of the, it's around a hundred links. So it looks like a lot of work, but it gets going by quick once you get the hang of it. So when you're ready to, to put your tracks on your, either my tracked vehicle or your blizzard, um, obviously remove the other tracks. And you'll have, you should have a bunch of spares left over, spare pins and guide pins and stuff like that. And um, to start with, depending on which which end is your front or your rear, because remember you can you can decide which end is which on this. Um, also, it's kind of up to you as the tread pattern. My thought was, this is the front for mine, so I thought that I would have them shaped like this, so they're almost like they scoop into the ground as it's driving like this. Um, but you you could experiment and see which side has more traction, you know, going going that way or that way. I'm gonna put them on like this though. So I'll normally just set the thing on there and line it up on the front sprocket like this here. And then bring the other end up to it. And if you have a big gap, um, I think I believe I have 47 links on this. You'll want to adjust your idler tension and bring it all the way forward. And to do that, you got to loosen up this this screw right here. So with that all the way forward, then our track lines up here. So on this link, I'll have to put in those um, track or wheel guide pins. And then I'll kind of use the teeth of the sprocket to help me keep them in line while I take some pins and pin them in here. I would start both sides before you let go so it has like even tension on it. And then I'll just use my needle nose here to help me push them in. And depending on, like say you print these yourself and they come out just slightly different, you know, you might need to add a track or remove a track, but you want to, you want to make it so you're able to add, or so you're able to move this wheel back so you can like adjust how tight the tracks are. Like if this is already as far back as it can go, then you want to remove a link so it gives you more play to move it around. So, see, I'll just add 
just a little bit of tension because it was already really close. And then I'll go ahead and tighten the screw back up. And uh, another thing I noticed on these is after you start driving them for a little while, like that test video I made where I was out in the backyard garden, um, the tracks will actually kind of wear themselves in just a little bit. So after a couple of runs you'll notice your tracks are really loose. So you just come back and adjust the tension backwards a little bit. What happens is the actual hole, since the, the holes are 3D printed and we don't drill them out, um, this, this slight little bit of maybe like a li little 3D printed noodle, maybe like hung down or you know there's just might be some slight imperfections in the hole. After you drive it for a while, those imperfections kind of smooth out. So your tracks kind of, you know, they just have a little bit more play in them. But once that happens, that, sh that should be, only need, you know, one or two adjustments. And then it's the exact same thing on the other side. So I think that pretty much covers everything with these tracks. So leave a comment or something, and, you know, if you have any questions, let me know. So thanks for watching.